welcome to Live in the Hive. I'm Michelle Eagleton and you're watching the only online magazine show dedicated to theatre across Greater Manchester. And it all happens in here, my garden bar, the Hive. Yes, this is where I am every Sunday at eight, bringing you the latest theatre news and interviews. So if you love theatre, you're in the right place. Maybe you're watching on the I Love Manchester Facebook page, that iconic city brand dedicated to community and culture. Or maybe you're watching on our very own Live in the Hive page, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, if you like it, do spread the word. But who have we got on the show tonight? Well, we've got some great guests coming up. I tell you, we have got a lady who is currently rehearsing to star in a brilliant musical. It's called Greatest Days. She's called Holly Ashton. She's going to be telling me about the character she's playing and what it's like to be in the official take that musical and if that wasn't enough Conrad Murray is going to be joining me later on in the show he's going to be teaching me how to beatbox that is going to be very very interesting he's also going to be telling me about unexpected twists which he has done the music for and I tell you it is cooler than cool and of course every week we like to bring you the latest from the Greater Manchester Theatre News World and yeah there's lots to talk about this week so shall we crack on with the show of course we should i hear you cry well first up tonight we're gonna kick off with something that is very close to my heart hands up if you were a take that fan I still am, I have to say. And so when the musical Greatest Days said that it was coming to Manchester in May, well, I am all over it like a rash. Of course, I had to find out all the gossip. And one person who knows all about that is the lady who's starring in it. She's playing Zoe. She's called Holly. And here she is to tell us all about what the show is. It's about a group of young girls who grow up with a boy band. Do you know what it's like when you're 16? They're the soundtrack to your life, aren't they? So it's about these friends who love a boy band. I won't spoil the story. Something happens and they sort of go their separate ways and they meet up again 25 years later. So it's about how the band have, that music has influenced their lives and what's happened to them. So it is packed full of all the Take That songs, you've got all the classics in there. But yeah, it's not about the band. It's about the girls and friendship. And I think it's the sort of show that you want to come to with your girlfriends. Oh, well, you know? absolutely. I remember it as the band, you know, the first yes. time. Yes. And then it's become Greatest Days. And yeah. yes, there's a group of friends and there's younger and older versions. Now, yeah. I hate to say it, it feels really bad saying you're the <laughs> older version. Yes. But you are the older version of Zoe. And yes. what's her character like then? Because they're all quite unique, aren't they, these girls? Yeah, they are, absolutely. And they've all had sort of a nice shift between, you know, the younger version and sort of how they've uh, turned out at the end. So Zoe's the sort of the bookworm when she's younger. She's the one that's very much into her studies and not really into boys. Um, she's the one, though, she doesn't break any rules. She's the one that always, you know, does what she's told. And then when we see her later on, it turns out that she's, she didn't finish university and she's ended up with four boys, four grown up lads. Um, and so she's she's quite organised when she's older and, um, you know, like looking after everybody. I found it, I mean, as a, a woman of a certain age who did go through that boy band era. Yeah. I just felt like it was almost like looking into a mirror. Honestly, the audience just really connect to this musical, Holly. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, what we feel it, you know, as older <laughs> versions of the characters, you know, because we've all been there and we've done it and we've got those groups of friends that we did go and see the boy band with when we were that age, you know, and and at that age you have all these hopes and dreams, don't you? And and then, you know, there's sort of the, the gap in this show, you don't see sort of what happened in between, but people very often are never then when they, where they think they're going to be from 16. And, yeah. and I think most people can relate to that. And, and also the boy band, as I say, relating to that. Were you a fan of Take That? Were they your boy band of choice? Now, you don't have to just say no. I know Gary <laughs> watches his show, but, you know. <laughs> Absolutely. 
take that is my boy band of choice. I mean, and I remember, you know, younger, but and then, you know, when they came back, I was at the circus tour at Wembley with my group of friends, you know, I was right in front of that B stage, cheering a lot. It's just, you know, they're amazing. Be, what, being with everyone. What's it like then being in this music beca- musical? Because I know that they are a big part of it, as well as obviously yeah. Tim Firth has wrote an amazing script for you. Yeah. It's so funny and, and yeah. kind of heartwarming. But have the boys popped in to see how you're doing? Have you had any messages of them? They haven't popped in to see us yet. I don't know when they might be popping in. I'm presuming maybe it will be a surprise, so we oh. don't know. But yeah, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> it will be exciting when they come and uh, oh my yeah, God. see. It'll be see like a scene done. from the show. It will be. Uh, honestly, I- I'm slightly worried that I'm going to revert to my 16 year old self and just be a bit giddy, you know, and not be able to be a normal human being. But, you know, oh, fingers crossed. <laughs> oh, did you get to see it the first time around? And-, and has anything changed that you know of? I didn't get to see it the first time around. I was working away, I was out the country. So it completely passed me by. Um, so I don't really know what's what's changed or what's different. Um, obviously, we've, I'm presuming all the songs are the same, and I think the dialogue's pretty much the same. So I guess maybe it's just that you've got different people interpreting the different roles, um, but it's still I been think, good fun. On the record, right, I really feel that nothing needed to change. It was absolutely amazing, and I'm loving the fact we are going to get a different cast. What is your favourite bit in the musical then? What's the favourite song, dance number? I think I really love Back for Good because it's the one of the very few times that we get to have the younger versions of ourselves with us. There's something, it's just, it's beautiful. It's so touching. I really, really love that. Um, The boys' concert is amazing as well. Yeah. You know, they have that's that's always good. People are going to love that. They really are. <laughs> Is it weird seeing a younger version of yourself? Seeing that, that yeah. other part. Yeah, it is actually. And I think Hannah, who plays young Zoe, I think there's quite a likeness between us two. And it's it's sort of that thing of going, Oh, I remember being that age. Where where's the time gone? <laughs> You know, um, but it is lovely because when do you get that happen in a show? You don't, you know, I'm at the age now where you've got people playing, you know, your son or your daughter and it's nice to have that connection. But to have a younger version playing the same character, it's, yeah, it's great. It's lovely. You know, it's going to go mental when you come to Manchester. We are the home of Take yeah. That. Yeah, I can't wait. It's going to be brilliant. Can't it wait. Is. You need to prepare yourself because honestly, <laughs> the crowds are gonna go absolutely wild, Tolly. I'm um, I'm ready for it. I can't wait. I've got friends here in Manchester who what well, a couple of them who came with me to see take that. So having them in the audience is just gonna be another another level for me. So yeah, can't wait for Manchester. Well, we can't wait as well. And we get you before the movie comes out. And I always <sighs> say stage versions are way better than movies. <laughs> Well, well, we'll wait and see, but... <laughs> oh, I honestly can't wait for that musical to come in May. You know it's going to be fantastic. The audience is going to be electric. And imagine if Take That actually turn up to opening night of Greatest Days in Manchester. I mean, it could happen. You never, never know. And of course, if Gary's watching this, come on, head down. You know you want to. Just don't think it'd be safe with me, would it? Anyway, <laughs> still to come on the show, we are joined by Conrad Murray. He's going to be showing me how to beatbox. That's going to be very interesting. And he's going to be telling me about his new musical, Unexpected Twist. It sounds cooler than cool. But first, let's take a look at what's happening in the world of theatre this week. It's time for this Greater Manchester Theatre News and the Queens are back. Yes, they are going to reign supreme once more in Salford. They're coming to the Lowry next year. This has just been announced. They're going to be doing three weeks from the 13th of August to the 1st of September. The bad news is you've got to wait till next year. But the good news is the tickets are on sale now. And if you can get one of them, you'll be very lucky. They go like hotcakes. And of course, 
It is because this is an award-winning musical. It's a smash hit in the West End. It's been on Broadway. It's going all over the world. And if you've not seen it, I definitely recommend that you do. It's all about the six wives of Henry VIII. Like, you've never seen them before. They're six wonderful divas. It's actually like watching a full-on pop concert. So do get your hands on them if you can. As I say, they're on sale right now. And if you are any good with a pen and paper and fancy yourself as a writer, well, this might just be right up your street because Hive North have announced that submissions are now being taken for their annual new writing competition. It's called Outstage Us. It's the sixth year this has been going and it showcases the best new writing within and about the LGBTQ plus community. It gives an amazing platform to tell their stories, shed spotlights on issues, experiences and themes and up to 10 of the best new submissions are going to be staged for two nights at the Lowry on July the 14th and 15th. What an amazing opportunity. On top of that, the successful writers get paid a fee of 350 quid. That is not bad. If you're interested in putting submission forward, then do give their website a visit. It's all on their hivenorth.co.uk forward slash outstagers and you've got to be quick because the deadlines are all in by May the 11th. Oh, that sounds so exciting. It could be you. If it is, do let us know if you get shortlisted. I think that will be absolutely brilliant. Now, talking of things that are brilliant, I love new musicals, especially when they mix things up a bit. And that's exactly what Unexpected Twist is doing right now. It's currently on tour. It's wowing audiences. And well, if you want to see what it's all about, take a look at this. We cool, you come, you do as I say, say. We cool, you come, you do as I say, say. We cool, you come, you do as I say, okay. Now, if that's not wet your appetite, our next guest will. He's called Conrad Murray. He's the guy behind the music in that trailer. And I caught up with him earlier this week. He told me all about the musical and, more importantly, gave me a beatbox lesson. Conrad, I've got to say, this sounds the coolest production ever. Honestly, I don't know who's more excited to go and see this, me or my 12-year-old girl. <laughs> That's great. I mean, I think you'll both enjoy it. And there's, there is something for everyone to kind of like watch and kind of get into as many layers to the show. So that's it. It's a real kind of mashup, this, isn't it? Because it's called Unexpected Twist. It's penned by Michael Rosen, who we'll get onto in a bit. But it's the story of Oliver Twist in some respects, but seen from a schoolgirl's eyes because there's, it's like modern day meets kind of olden day isn't it tell us a bit about what we can expect yeah so it's got like the parallels of of all of the twists um and actually we have some of the characters of all of the twists in it but we've we've got our own version of oliver shona she is um a new girl in school she's starting a new starting a new school but she got she comes from a single parent family who are struggling financially um her mom has passed away so she's not an orphan, but she's lost a parent. And being that she is quite vulnerable because she's new, she's got no money, um, she, it makes her easier to kind of fall into the the, the, the equivalent of Fagan, from the original Oliver, which ours is called Tino. Tino, sorry, is our um, Alpha Dodger. Alpha Dodger. Uh, and uh, he leads them into the gangs with our Fagan. But in ours, it's kind of more along the county lines kind of element and dealing contraband and giving them phones to kind of work for them so, um but a alongside that we have kind of um all of the, the the song the songs we've got our own songs which are kind of grime trap r&b some some kind of pop ballads um to kind of tell our story you've got a few rap battles in there as well haven't you comrade 
Rap, yeah, we, we've got some raps in there. So if people are seeing it as battles, that's, that's all good, yeah. How important is it to kind of bring all these kind of old stories to a modern day audience and give it a modern day feel? Because I imagine it's connecting to the youngsters of today a lot more than I guess Charles Dickens did back in the day. Yeah, I mean, I feel like, you know, because we could just tell uh, our, our story, a new, a new story, um, and not mention Oliver Twist. But, 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 but whilst using Oliver Twist, knowing this is bring up to date, what it also tells us is that the same themes keep coming up of inequality, mm -hmm. of kind of like people being vulnerable, taking advantage of, um, uh, and, and, and also the, the good in society. We've got a well-meaning teacher who's kind of like our Nancy, who's trying to help out. It brings it up to date, and it also tells us something about these old stories that sometimes, you know, we, things don't just change or move on or the old days. We're still those same people. We're, we're, a lot of things don't change. It's kind of universal kind of things of kind of equality and love and hope are still there, but we see them in many different ways, and they're still challenges for us. I think sometimes everyone thinks, you know, we've, we've got mobile, mobile phones, now we've got computers, we're, 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 we're very different, we're, we, we've, we've beat all that, but actually we've got a whole whole list of new problems and and also the problems we always had as humans, we still, we still have them. Absolutely, I know, and you know, getting involved in this must be great for you because I think you do work a lot with younger people, getting them in, inspired in music. How did you come on board with this project? Um, so the, the the director James Dacre, he he called me whilst I was in Australia because I had another show which uh, was based on a book was another, another book called uh, Frankenstein Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, and we'd done really well in the UK. We got lots of five star reviews. I think all four star reviews we would sold out, uh, and then was on an international tour. And also in the past, I'd done a different adaptation. Uh, worked on a uh, with pilot uh, with a director from there, Esther. That was an adaptation of Kong to Nights. Mm -hmm. um, and we, we put rap and beatbox and kind of all, uh, modern, a lot of modern genres into that play. And he just said, I've seen Kong to Nights. I think he'd seen Frankenstein, I heard of it. And Frankenstein was made into a BBC film. And he was like, would you be up for working on this? And I was like, definitely. You know, that sounds amazing. Um, he told me about kind of, uh, my, it was based on a Michael Rosen book, and I was thinking, well, like, you know, obviously Michael Rosen is kind of a legendary writer. And then when I also then found out that um, Roy Williams was on board, it just obviously made the team even kind of stronger. And, you know, these are all, you know, all legends in the game. But, and then later on, we've got Ariel, who's a choreographer, and she's, you know, she's like an award-winning, Olivia award-winning choreographer. So I was like, well, this is an amazing team to kind of to be part of. It's like the Avengers being assembled to, to come together to, 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 to create this kind of new modern masterpiece and now here we are i love it and you know people are loving it audiences think it's fantastic you mentioned you know your avengers kind of team there it is an incredible team michael rosen oh you know we've got so many of his books as a family one of my favorite is we're going on a bear hunt with that book as well it's almost very lyrical and yeah. has got that style did you work closely with michael on getting, you know, the, the, the songs and music right? Uh, no, we, 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 we played them to him. He heard them and he gave his kind of like, uh, you know, he, he loved them and he, he loves them and he, he supports the show. But I didn't work quite closely with him on, on them. He kind of came and then heard them as they were done. But you are right. He, he loves rhythm and rhyme and he actually loves theatre. Theatre is his first love. And he loves young people. So, you know, he's in his 70s or... I think certainly so he I, you know we're, we're we're young people to him and we're making sure young people and he loved he just loves people so he's he's really he was really excited about anything that was just new and like what using his work I, I he was such a giving guy like you kind of feel that kind of radiating off him and he gave lots of kind of tips and he told us a lot about his life and I guess him being in, in the room with us talking to us and inspired us to know we're going in the right direction and seeing him like really enjoy it and um he's come to see it and he said he loves it and he, he he's right he's written a lot about and done interviews about the show so yeah i never we never got to work like that i mean hopefully one day you never know um you should get in beatboxing yeah should do should do 
I seen you recently beatboxing. I was very impressed on Blue Peter when yeah. uh, they they did one of the songs. Did you did you get a Blue Peter badge? Did you leave with a badge, Conrad? I actually did. Yeah, I got a Blue Peter badge. You know I, you've made it when you get a Blue Peter badge. I got it right here. I got Shut it. Shut up. <laughs> yeah. They get you in everywhere. Honestly, they are definitely worth it. You know. Yeah, apparently you get some discounts for theme parks or something like that. I don't know. Um, I love it. I was wondering, though, if you could teach me a little bit of beatboxing because, honestly, it's seriously cool. It really is. But is there kind of a way that you can start off or for anyone, young or old, who's watching this, you know, any kind of tips or tricks you can give? Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I'll, I'll show you how to do the kick drum. So if you can just repeat after me, if hopefully there's no one around you, can, you can do this. Uh, can you just say boom? Boom. 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 Now we're going to take off the oom and we're just going to go, we're just going to use the bu, the Okay, and, 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 and add a little tip. This is your kick drum sound. Add a little tip. Is can you blow a raspberry? So a mini raspberry. Not good at that. Well, yes. Yeah, so so the, 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 trip, uh, the, the trick is to, to, to relax. It's actually you've got to keep your lips quite not, not so tight. Lots of fluid breath. <laughs> and now try and add that energy into your kick drum. Great, and that 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 you explore that, practice that with your conflicts, and your your kick drum will, will develop, and you can add, create different timbres and sounds of kind of drum. That's, that's kind of the first sound. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep practicing. I promise. Honestly, at the minute, I think I'm spraying across everybody, but I'm okay. sure <laughs> once I get used to it, that that will stop. Oh, fantastic! When did you start? doing that what what kind of inspired you to get into beatboxing and kind of the world of hip-hop uh, well, I was always kind of like it's always around me in my state you always hear like hip-hop and reggae was quite big um I remember with beatbox there was someone called Razel so anyone who knows he was part of the roots and he used to do this thing where he'd sing and beatbox at the same time and we'd practice in my friend's kitchen trying to do it I'm thinking it was it was a lie it wasn't making any sounds but it was, it was he was really doing them and um, i was actually the worst person actually i'm a i'm a mates i think my brother thinks how come you're doing this i mean I, I, I can, but i'm quite competitive so i'm like you know if i i, I was just going to keep practicing keep doing it keep doing it and I, i'm really into rap as well so i was I had a rap a rap group called rhodium and so i always wanted to kind of like rap and beatbox so just just part of kind of everything i did what a talented guy Conrad is and what a musical. That sounds absolutely fantastic. I love it when they do a mashup and really make something fresh. And if you are going to see that one, I think it's definitely one for all the family. You'll come out feeling very, very cool. I don't often feel cool. So you know what? I'm going to make the most of that time. But if you are interested in going to see a show, any show across Greater Manchester, then you can always head to the I Love Manchester website. They have got all the information that you need there, all the listings of what's on head down there. And of course, if you want to follow us throughout the week, we are on social. So do go and give us a follow on Twitter and Instagram. We're at Live in the Hive 21. And of course we'll be back next week with more theatre news and interviews here on Facebook on I Love Manchester and live in the hive so until then have a great week enjoy the bank holiday and I'll see you Sunday <laughs>